You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another interesting episode of Ask Drone You News. That's right, I don't have the Flying Dutchman with me today as he is flying across the American roads in his Tesla. Lucky dude. Yeah, I agree. Lucky guy. So joining me today, as always... Bob. Hey, Bob. How's it going? (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. It's a pleasure to be here with you as usual, and uh, thank you guys as usual for being with us as well. Definitely. So because it's the new year, it is 2020, and we have kind of, uh, how do I say, gone off the rails uh, on news, meaning there's not a lot of news this week. But next week, we're expecting there to be a lot of news. So make sure that you check it out because there's going to be a lot of news going on. Uh, You know, Rob, we have got a pretty busy week ahead of us. The remote ID is published, so the comment period is open, and we're expecting so much from CES. So I think I'm just going to delve into remote ID. Uh, Just so you guys know, we're going to make another video just about remote ID. We're going to actually focus on, is remote ID even legal? Question mark. Yes. That's the question. We're also going to be going over a few other points that I don't think a lot of people have touched on, which I'm really happy about because, you know, Rob, something I've noticed in this industry, like a lot of other tech industries, is if you are the first to put stuff out, typically what happens is that other people just copy you. There's not a lot of depth going on. So I think it's smart to hold back the good information. Hmm. That way, after all the, all the noise has passed, you can put out the right stuff. Well, I definitely think it's uh, good to be thorough. I think that well, that's just the age we live in, right? Where everybody, I mean, it's a, a news cycle. I don't even know, is a news cycle even 24 hours anymore? It seems like it's about, I don't know, six to eight hours maybe? 24 seconds. It's very, very fast. And so everybody is doing their very best, if you want to put it that way, to get information out that's new, to try to be the first or at least one of the first. And not that there's anything wrong with that as long as it is at least accurate. Probably not going to be able to be thorough in that particular uh, approach. But nonetheless, I do appreciate that uh, you and we are are efforting to be as thorough as possible, not necessarily as fast as possible. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely pressing when the New York Times calls you to, to, to give a quote. But um, I will just say, we're not going to say very much on remote ID. There's uh, a lot of potential issues with it. My prediction, though, is that network-based remote ID will not actually happen. I think it's going to be broadcast only. That means no internet. That means 80% of the drones that are already out there that have it will work. Um, and I really think that uh, it's it, no one's going to be on board with remote ID the way it is. So speaking of which, we are actually having a webinar Friday at 4 p.m. Mountain. That's 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I want you to join us. If you have questions about remote ID, I want you to join us. If you have questions about how to comment, what to say, what to do, or even where to find more resources, I would like for you to join us. So um, make sure you check it out. The link is below. It's open to everyone. You don't have to be a member. Our goal is really discovery. So uh, it's you know figuring out questions that you have, digging into certain topics, but then giving you resources to help you comment and also giving you some form of navigation on what you can do to fight this and actually be effective in doing so. So please join us tomorrow. I guess that's Friday if this comes out on Thursday. Or maybe it's today. Yeah, it's probably today by the time this gets out. And I'll just add that I'm really hoping that many of the people on the uh, webinar have actually read, if not all of it, a lot of it, so that perspectives from your reading of the document can come out in the webinar in, in the form of questions and clarifications, because I think that's where a lot of the value of this webinar is going to come, not just from Paul and Vic preaching at everybody. They've read it. Which they have some perspectives. Not, yeah, and, and I'm not saying that is your that is your approach or that's your goal at all. I'm not saying that at all. But I think a lot of people might be coming 
to just listen, which is fine. That's fine as well. But if a lot of you come with your own perspectives and questions, that's going to make the webinar that much more valuable and beneficial to the to the group that's there, as well as to people that watch it afterwards, as well as to the industry, et cetera, et cetera. So anyways, I hope you'll do that if you get a chance. I think it'll be worth your time. That's for sure. And I think yeah. also, you know, when, if we were to provide, um, how do I say this? Uh, if we are to organize and provide a, a uniform response to this, I think we're going to be so much more effective as a whole. So make sure to join us. But going into uh, the first piece of news this week. It looks like, Rob, you know, we've been talking about Autel a lot. The new Autel Evo 2, the hopes have been high. And we're really, really excited about it because it could be the Phantom Killer right as DJI re-releases the Phantom 4 Pro version 2, hmm. um, which has a lot of questions being raised. You know, are they going to bring back the Phantom 4 Advanced, P4PA? Which would be great. It has a lot more value than, than the, the P. And I, and I only say that because not everyone needs obstacle avoidance sensors, if you know who I'm talking about. Anyway, uh, I know that you're in that category as well, Rob, but... Um, <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you... A, <laughs> no, you are. Let me ask you a question, though. Autel just announced that they're actually going to be a vendor at CES, uh -huh. and many other vendors have announced months ago that they're going to be at CES. Other vendors meaning in the UAV space? In the UAV space, but typically in the tech space, it's pretty you know, normal to say, hey, I'm going to be at CES, and I'm going to show you guys some stuff. Yeah. Do you think that... Uh, the fact that they waited so long to announce their arrival, then maybe it was strategic. Perhaps strategic. Perhaps it was waiting to see if they were going to be ready to actually do what they were hoping to do at CES. Well, that's a good point. Um, I would actually lean towards that. I didn't realize. So this is where you're probably going to wish you had Haya because he's much more knowledgeable on this stuff <laughs> when talking to Paul. <laughs> so miss you, Haya. But anyways... Um, that would be my guess if, in fact, they announced their involvement at CES late. I would think it's because they wanted to make sure what they wanted to do at CES would be ready to do. Yeah. That would be my guess. But yeah. Interesting thought. It also makes me wonder, you know, with the, the competition being so high, it makes me wonder if they waited to announce the fact that they were going to be there so that other companies had no data point on whether they were going to be there or not. It's kind of the Bill Belichick method of uh, injury Ooh, reporting. Really? Yeah. I didn't, I need to read about that. Yeah. I'm not a sports <laughs> guy. Can you give us, can you give me a quick rundown on that? Well, please? I think there are, well, um, he, he manipulates that process that the NFL has for reporting injuries exceptionally well. Some people, I, there's probably people out there that would say it's just one more way that they cheat, but I, I'm not a Is New England really guy. I'm not cheating? a New England fan, but I'm kind of tired of all the New England cheats and that's why they win crap. But, um, oh, wow. he, exactly. But he just manages that right up against the line probably as to what's allowed in terms of who's actually going to be able to play on a given Sunday. That's a, all the coaches do that because it messes with the other team's ability to prepare for that game, right? So it's exactly what you're talking about in some sense of what these other manufacturers are going to be able to prepare for if Autel waits to the last minute, kind of like what New England does with their injury reporting. They're not the only team that does that. He's just the most known for it. And so anyways, that came to mind. But yeah, it's interesting to think about. I, I wonder. It'll be fun to see. You'll there, be there. So I, I, yeah, I'm hopefully actually, you can get some insights into that. I'm expecting a, a couple new drones, actually. I'm expecting for Unique uh, to put out a more refined version of uh, the drone that they were. I don't even know if you would call teasing it. It wasn't yeah. really teasing it. It was more like, hey, check out our 3D printed RTK thing that we're going to put on this drone. <laughs> yeah. So a couple of questions. One is, you mentioned, is this going to finally be the Phantom Killer? How many times have we actually heard somebody say that about many, another drone? Too many. It, it's so... <laughs> and by the way, this, a, the Skydio ahead. is definitely not a Phantom Killer. I think the Skydio is definitely a drone that's going to change the market. It's going to change the way that we think about uh, regulating airspace. And in fact, uh, it's, it's really funny because... I think that the Skydio, if it was, if enough people were actually educated on like how it flies, it might actually force the FAA to like fundamentally code switch and really think about what they can enforce versus what they can't as far as usability of airspace. Mm. Um, so 
Skydio does is not the is not the Phantom Killer, right? We've heard before that Autel Evo, the original one, could be the Mavic Killer. I love the original Evo because it didn't have geofencing and it had a built-in screen in the remote, which I really, really love. So I have my phone. I could just use my phone. Um, but, you know, you're right. We have heard that a lot. But until there's a drone that can do photography, photogrammetry, for those of you out there, that's measuring from photos, and videography that's in a portable, compact size that can fit in a backpack, then we don't have a Phantom Killer. That makes sense? With a global shutter. Sorry. Caveat, global shutter. So, yeah, that's a whole podcast in and of itself in that it, I am actually surprised that there has not been another drone come out to compete more directly with what you just said. It doesn't seem like rocket science, but maybe it's, maybe it is. I don't know. To get, to accomplish what they accomplished with the Phantom, I'm surprised nobody else has been able to match that. Well, you could chalk it up to either CEO syndrome I don't listen to my audience syndrome or I don't care what my audience has to say syndrome. Or is it more just the ability to execute? And maybe it's uh, the cost, for example, of putting all those things in one drone, including a global shutter. I don't know. Well, a global shutter, as we know, is a very expensive piece yeah. to manufacture. But DJI had the the in with Sony. I guess we're going to see yeah. who has the in with Sony at CES. Because like, like I said, Rob, I'm expecting a lot of drones. It's not just the Autel Evo 2. We're expecting to see if DJI has changed anything with the Phantom, which I don't think that they have. Um, we may see a tease to the Mavic 3, the Inspire 3. I'm expecting to see, you know, FreeFly launch that new quad. The, what is it? The FreeFly X. Stoked to see that drone. Very, very, very excited to see that drone. Um, but also I'm, ex I'm excited to see, it looks like, you know, our next piece of drone news. Insta360, which is a camera that's actually really well known, overtook the GoPro Fusion as far as 360 cameras are concerned and really opened up the world to drone pilots as drone pilots could attach this small camera on top of their Mavic and get really cool 360 video. On Twitter today, they actually tease that they may be making a camera very specifically for a drone. So not only on top of these new drones, but we're going to be seeing even new cameras as well. And you know, Rob, with the, with the rise of the new decade and the fact that the last couple CESs were pretty small, it makes me wonder if, uh, are we on the new evolution of sensors, I mean camera sensors, I mean internet uh, antennas and radios, and I mean you know components and parts. Because if all of the components and parts are getting cheaper and cheaper to manufacture, we can create better connections between um, those different sensors, parts and pieces. Then won't the drone industry evolve as well? I think absolutely. This actually is interesting in that I think it kind of takes us back to, I think it was our last podcast about there ever being a $100 million plus UAV company, right? And some of what you're talking about is probably going to be what leads to that, is some of those capabilities that are coming about through technology moving so fast, which it has been for a long time. It just moves so incredibly fast. So yeah, I would think it'd be crazy not to expect that kind of uh, progress. Couldn't agree. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't agree more, Rob. I'm really excited because, um, you know, it, these these larger megapixel sensors are getting much, much cheaper. So, I mean, I just looked at an A7R Mark III, and it was $1,700. Versus what would that have been, whatever, I don't know, even, even a year ago, two, two years, years ago. Two years ago, it was like three grand. So almost in half. Yeah. Wow. I mean, the camera that I spent two grand on, the A6300, you can now pick up for like 650 bucks. Wow. 700 bucks. And really, it's still fine, particularly with all the ways that you can actually look at that footage or look at those images, right? Actually, I prefer my particular camera over the A7R3 or A7R2 or even the A7R4 because it's just so much easier to shoot video on. And frankly, it does a very good job at video. I don't have the best photos. But honestly, with everyone looking on their damn phones, I don't really need the best photos exactly. anymore. <laughs> I'm kind of like, okay, I like the full frame, but you know what? It's just so much more to carry, and I'm just not there. How many people, I mean, we're not producing TV movies or anything like that, right? So how many people actually go look at images on their 4K yeah. television? That's a good question. There's a very, very small number of people. Very good question. It's all on the phone. No, you're right. Or maybe a laptop or something, but... 
even still. Yeah, even still. Well, other than that, like I said, we don't really have much new news. So but this is really remote ID. We're coming up with resources to help you comment on it. Um, it may be illegal on a number of factors, but we're going to dive into that and that legal uh, legalese. And the other piece of news about CES is Autel scheduled to be there. And then another CES story, Insta360 launching their camera. I'm expecting a couple other drone manufacturers to launch drones at CES. Two particularly. Not going to give away the names. I think you guys know who they are. Just because if someone's listening to this show, I don't want to give it all away. You know, I don't want to be like, yeah, DJI is launching LiDAR. Like, I don't want to say things like that, you know? Well, okay. <laughs> Was that just hypothetical? Uh, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so I think what this says is stay tuned next week because Paul and Haya and I think that's it. Well, there was going to be a lot of people there, but in terms of reporting on CES, keep yeah. an eye on on those two in particular. Yeah, agreed, agreed. All right, guys, well, that's going to do it for us today. Please leave us a review wherever you download the show. It helps other people find us. Please. Register for the webinar. Yeah. Link below. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Dronia. Ask Dronia.